Now, I think we can all agree how valuable it is to hear from practitioners. And I, I want to thank the panel for sharing their knowledge with the community. And one common challenge that I heard you all talk about was bringing your leadership and your teams along on the journey with you. We talk about this all the time. I mean, it's critical to have support from the top. Why? Because it directs the middle and then it enables bottoms up innovation effects from the cultural transformation that you guys all talked about. It seems like another common theme we heard is that you all prioritize database decision-making in your organizations. And you combine two of your most valuable assets to do that and create leverage, employees on the front lines, and of course, the data. Now, as you rightly pointed out, Tom, the pandemic has accelerated the need for really leaning into this. You know, the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, COVID has broken everything. And, and it's great to hear from our experts, you know, how to move forward. So let's get right into it. So Gustavo, let's start with you. If, if I'm an aspiring change agent, and let's say I'm a, I'm a budding data leader, what do I need to start doing? What habits do I need to create for long lasting success? I think curiosity is very important. You need to be, like I said, in tune to what is happening, not only in your specific field, like I have a passion for analytics. I've been doing this for 50 years plus, but I, I think you need to understand well-being other areas across, not only a specific business. As you know, I come from, you know, Sam's Club, Walmart, retail. I've been in energy management, technology. So you have to try to push yourself and basically Go out of your comfort zone. I mean, if you are staying in your comfort zone and you want to just do continuous improvement, that's just going to take you so far. What you have to do is, and that's what I try to do, is I try to go into areas, businesses, and transformations that make me, you know, stretch and, and develop as a leader. That's what I'm looking to do so I can help transform the functions, organizations, and do the change management, the change of mindset that is required for this kind of effort. Uh, thank you for that, that was inspiring. And, and Cindy, you love data and the data is pretty clear that diversity is, is a good business, but I wonder if you can you know, add your perspectives to this conversation. Yeah, so Michelle has a new fan here because she has found her voice. I'm still working on finding mine. And it's interesting because I was raised by my dad, a single dad. So he did teach me how to work in a predominantly male environment, but why I think diversity matters more now than ever before, and this is by gender, by race, by age, by just different ways of working and thinking, is because as we automate things with AI, if we do not have diverse teams looking at the data and the models and how they're applied, we risk having bias at scale. So this is why I think I don't care what type of minority you are, finding your voice, having a seat at the table, and just believing in the impact of your work has never been more important. And, and as Michelle said, more possible. Great perspectives, thank you. Uh, Tom, I want to go to you. So, I mean, I feel like everybody in our business has in some way, shape, or form become a COVID expert, but what's been the impact of the pandemic on your organization's digital transformation plans? We've seen a massive uh, growth actually you know, in our digital business over the last uh, 12 months really, uh, even acceleration, right, once, once COVID hit. Uh, we really saw that, uh, that uh, in the 200 countries and territories that we operate in today and service our customers in today, that uh, there's been a, a huge need, right, to uh, send money, to support family, to support uh, friends, right, and to support, loved ones across the world. And as part of that, uh, we, you know, we, we're, we are uh, very uh, honored to be able to support those customers that we, uh, across all the countries today. But as part of that acceleration, we need to make sure that we had the right architecture and the right platforms to basically scale, right? To basically support and provide the right kind of security for our customers going forward. So as part of that, uh, we, we did do some, uh, some pivots and we did uh, accelerate some of our plans on digital to help support that overall growth coming in and to support our customers going forward. Because during these times, during this pandemic, right, this is the most important time where we need to support those, those that we love and those that we care about. And, and doing that, some of those ways is actually by sending money to them, to support them financially. And that's where uh, really our product and our services come into play that, you know, and really support those families. So it was really a, uh, a, 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 a great opportunity for us to really support and really bring um, some of our products to the next level in supporting our business going forward. 
Awesome, thank you. Now, I want to come back to Gustavo. and Tom, I'd love for you to chime in too. Did you guys ever think like you were, you were pushing the envelope too much and, and doing things with, with data or the technology that was just maybe too bold? Maybe you felt like it, at some point it was, it, was, it was failing or you're pushing your people too hard. Did, can you share that experience and, and how you got through it? Yeah, the way I look at it is, you know, again, whenever I go to an organization, I ask the question, hey, how fast you would like to transform? And, you know, based on the, the agreements on the leadership and the vision that we want to take place, I take decisions and, and I collaborate in a specific way. Now, in the case of COVID, for example, right, it forces us to remove silos and collaborate in a faster way. So to me, it was an opportunity to actually integrate with other areas and, and drive decisions faster. But make no mistake about it, when you are doing a transformation, you are obviously trying to do things faster than sometimes people are comfortable doing, and you need to be okay with that. Sometimes you need to be okay with tension, or you need to be okay you know, debating points uh, or making repetitive business cases until people connect with the decision because you understand and you are seeing that, hey, the CEO is making a one, two year, you know, efficiency goal. The only way for us to really do more with less is for us to continue this path. We cannot just uh, stay with the status quo. We need to find a way to accelerate the transformation. That's the way Got I see it. How, how about you, Tom? We were talking earlier with Sadish and Cindy about that bungee jumping moment. Do you, <laughs> what could you share? Yeah, you, you know, I think you, you hit upon it. Uh, right now, the pace of change will be the slowest pace that you see for the rest of your career. So as part of that, right, that's what I tell my team is, is that you need, to be, you need to feel comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Meaning that we have to be able to basically uh, scale, right, expand and support the, the ever-changing needs in the marketplace and industry and our customers today. And that pace of change that's happening, right, and what customers are asking for and the competition in the marketplace, it's only going to accelerate. So as part of that, you know, as you look at what, uh, how you're operating today in your current business model, right, things are only going to get faster. So you have to plan and to align and to drive the actual transformation so that you can scale even faster into the future. So as part of that, that's what we're putting in place here, right, is how do we create that underlying framework and foundation that allows the organization to basically continue to scale and evolve into the future. Yeah, we're definitely out of our comfort zones, but we're getting comfortable with it. So Cindy, last question. You, you've worked with hundreds of organizations and I, I gotta believe that, you know, some of the advice you gave when you were at Gartner, which was pre-COVID, you know, maybe sometimes clients didn't always act on it. You know, not on my watch for whatever, for a variety of reasons, but it's being forced on them now. But knowing what you know now, that you know, we're all in this isolation economy. H how would you say that advice has changed? Has it changed? What, what's your number one action and recommendation today? Yeah, well, first off, Tom just freaked me out. What do you mean this is the slowest ever? I, even six months ago, I was saying the pace of change in data and analytics is frenetic. So, but I think you're right, Tom. It, the, the business and the technology together is forcing this change. Now, um, Dave, to answer your question, I would say the one bit of advice, maybe I was a little more um, very aware of the power in politics and how to bring people along in a way that they are comfortable. And now I think it's, you know what, you can't get comfortable. In fact, we know that the organizations that were already in the cloud have been able to respond and pivot faster. So if you really want to survive, as, as Tom and Gustavo said, get used to being uncomfortable. The power in politics are going to happen. Break the rules. Get used to that and, and be bold. Do not, do not be afraid to tell somebody they're wrong and they're not moving fast enough. I do think you have to do that with empathy, as Michelle said, and Gustavo. I think that's one of the key words today, besides the bungee jumping. So I want to know where's the dish going to go bungee jumping. <laughs> <laughs> right. Guys, fantastic uh, discussion, really. Thanks again to, to all the panelists and the guests. It was really a pleasure speaking with you today.
Really, virtually all of the leaders that I've spoken to in the CUBE program recently, you know, they tell me that the pandemic is accelerating so many things. Whether it's new ways to work, we're hearing about new security models, and, and obviously the need for cloud. I mean, all of these things are driving true enterprise-wide digital transformation, not just, as I said before, lip service. And sometimes we minimize the importance and, and the challenge of building culture and, and making this transformation possible. But when it's done right, the right culture is going to deliver tre tremendous results. You know, what does that mean, getting it right? Everybody's trying to get it right. My biggest takeaway today is it means making data part of the DNA of your organization. And that means making it accessible to the people in your organization that are empowered to make decisions, decisions that can drive new revenue, cut costs, speed access to critical care, whatever the mission is of your organization, data can create insights and inform decisions that drive value. Okay, let's bring back Sadish and wrap things up. Sadish, please bring us home. Thank you, thank you, Dave. Thank you, the Cube team, and thanks. Thanks goes to all of our uh, customers and partners who joined us, and thanks to all of you for spending the time with us. I want to do three quick things, and then uh, close it off. The first thing is I want to summarize the key takeaways that I had from all four of our distinguished speakers. First, Michelle, I will simply put it. She said it really well. That is, be brave and drive, don't go for a drive along. That is such an important point. Oftentimes, you know the right thing that you have to do to make the positive change that you want to see happen, but you wait for someone else to do it, not just, why not you? Why don't you be the one making that change happen? That's the thing that I pick, pick, for, picked up from uh, Michelle's uh, uh, talk. Cindy talked about finding, the importance of finding your voice. Taking that chair, whether it's available or not, and making sure that your ideas, your voices are heard, and if it requires some force, then apply that force, make sure your ideas are heard. Gustavo talked about the importance of building consensus, not going at things all alone sometimes, building the importance of building the quorum. And that is critical because if you want the changes to last, you want to make sure that the organization is fully behind it. Tom, instead of a single takeaway, what I was inspired by is the fact that a company that is 170 years old, 170 years old, 200 companies and 200 countries they're operating in. And they were able to make the change that is necessary through these uh, difficult times in a matter of months. If they could do it, anyone could. The second thing I want to do is to leave you with a, a takeaway. That is, I would like you to go to thoughtspot.com slash NFL because our team has made an app for NFL on Snowflake. I think you will find this interesting now that you are inspired and excited because of Michelle's talk. And the last thing is, please go to thoughtspot.com slash beyond. Our global user conference is happening in this December. We would love to have you join us. It's again virtual. You can join from anywhere. We are expecting anywhere from five to 10,000 people. And we would love to have you join and uh, uh, see what we've been up to since the last year. We, we have a lot of amazing things in store for you our customers, our partners, our collaborators, they will be coming and sharing. You'll be sharing things that you have been working to release, something that will come out next year. And also some of the crazy ideas our engineers have been hooking up. All of those things will be available for you at ThoughtSpot Beyond. Thank you, thank you so much.